Hello, my name is George Marshall, and I would like to provide you some information on the 2020 whole time recruitment process. Firstly, I'd like to apologise for not providing this information in person as planned. However, I'm sure you can all understand the reasons behind this. I appreciate that the awareness sessions would have given you the opportunity to ask questions. However, I am available on the phone to discuss any questions you have. So please give me a ring on 07785 451 796. So firstly, I'd like to give you some background information. There is a business need to appoint whole time firefighters by the end of the year. So we will be pressing on with this process. We are recruiting for at least 30 firefighter posts. However, the number required could be higher. And I would like to get a list of approximately 50 successful candidates. Whilst the process will be going ahead, some elements of the timetable may change and I would appreciate your flexibility within this. Any changes will be communicated directly to candidates. I will cover specific dates in a minute. However, as a whole, we are looking to complete the process by the end of July and recruits will start in October. That's either on a one week conversion course or a full recruits course. The process has been designed by managers of current firefighters, that's crew commanders, watch commanders and station commanders, to make it as appropriate as possible to the role. I've also asked the same managers who they believe should be involved in the process, that's the sifting, interviewing and scrutiny, and I will go with their recommendation. Feedback so far suggests that this is likely to be crew, watch and station commanders. This will also include on-call managers, as long as they've not entered the process. Obviously, this will become apparent as soon as the applications go live. Staff will be brought in also to perform scrutiny roles. They will observe and question all aspects of the process and decision making. This is likely to involve whole time and on-call operational staff, that's firefighters to watch commanders, non-uniform staff, trade union representation, that's from the FBU, the RFU, FOA, Unison, and also external staff. The process will be fair, and I want independent staff from a variety of backgrounds to assure this. You will be aware that positive action has also been taking place to support candidates, and it continues to take place for the physical tests. However, everybody will have to pass the same tests to the same standard, and the best performing candidates will get the jobs, regardless of background or station. On-call cover is not a consideration. If all the on-call staff from one station are successful, they will get the jobs, regardless of the short-term impact that this may have on on-call availability. There are no restrictions on applicants or transfers. Everybody does the same process, with the exception of physical and fitness tests, because you've already passed these. The only difference is that civilian candidates will have to pass a full recruits course, and on-call and transferees will have to pass an operational assessment. I'll explain more about this in a moment. So the first stage is the application form. The application process will open on Monday the 23rd of March and it will close on Monday the 6th of April. Applications will be capped at 1000, so please don't leave it to the last minute. As a guide, we had 997 applications in the two weeks in 2017, so we're expecting a similar amount this time. You will need to have maths and English at GCSE grade C or what is currently grade four or equivalent and a driving license. This is the same standards as on call. So you should already have these. In addition to your personal details, qualifications and work history can be uploaded in a CV form, which should make it easier for you to enter the process. You will also have to answer three questions directly relating to the role of a firefighter please answer accordingly. The application pack will signpost you to relevant documents that will help you answer the questions. These may be documents such as the firefighter role map and job description, leadership framework and the service website. Please read the questions and read the documents. Your scores will be accumulated throughout the process. So do not aim just to do enough. Please aim to do as best as you possibly can. Another tip would be to use the word limit. The word limit for each question will be 200. Please don't go over, but also please don't write 50 words and think that that's gonna be sufficient to get you through. Use the words. 
You will also be asked if you can swim 50 metres, but unlike 2017, this will not be tested. Now, if you successfully complete your application form, you will progress to the online tests. The application form will be assessed later, as I, as I will explain in a moment. Okay, the second stage is the online tests. There are a total of four online tests covering the assessment of risk, situational judgment, verbal reasoning and mechanical reasoning, and they will each take approximately 20 minutes each. All tests have been assessed by current uh, whole time firefighters to confirm that they are appropriate for the role. Two maths tests, including a complex test that was included in the previous recruitment process in 2017, have been assessed for their suitability and they will not be included in this process. Two tests will be sent out to you in at two separate dates and you will need to pass the first two tests before you're allowed to progress onto the second two. You'll be sent links to the first two tests on Wednesday the 8th of April and you will need to have completed the test by Monday the 13th of April. If successful, you'll be sent links to the second two tests on Tuesday the 14th of April and you'll need to have completed these by Monday the 20th of April. Please be aware that candidates will resit one or two tests on their interview day to basically check for cheating. If there are significant discrepancies between the marks you achieve at home and the marks you achieve during the interview, you will be withdrawn from the process. Okay, the third stage is the application form sift. This is going to take place in May. Applications will be sifted by relevant staff i.e. the people who directly line manage the firefighters, as recommended by the workforce. Each application form will be assessed by at least two teams of staff, which will involve four to six people. Applications will be marked against set assessment criteria and scrutiny and standardisation meetings will ensure consistency. To give you an idea of the investment we're making in this stage, I envisage needing approximately 25 staff for a period of two weeks to complete the SIFT. Okay, the next stage is physical tests. These will take place week commencing the 8th of June. They will be the same tests as, um, as you completed for your on-call test. Ladder climb, ladder lift, dummy drag, enclosed space test, uh, equipment assembly, ladder extension and equipment carry. Existing firefighters, that's on-call and external uh, whole time, will not need to take this to these tests as they've already passed them. However, there will be a shorter operational assessment week commencing the 13th of July, which I'll explain in a moment. These tests will be pass or fail. No scores will be carried forward. Pass marks will be exactly the same as when you did the test. OK. The fifth stage is the interview day. This will take place on the 29th of June and last for approximately two weeks. It's going to last for half a day. Uh, for each candidate and there will be three activities. The first activity is the interview. You will be given some information and asked to prepare a brief presentation uh, to deliver to the interview panel on a subject uh, and at a level relevant to the role of a firefighter. You will then be asked questions, probably four. Each question will be appropriate to the role of a firefighter and you will be signposted to relevant information such as the firefighter's role map, job description, leadership framework and service website that will help you prepare for this. You will then be asked to take part in a group test. This is going to be possibly a practical test or a group discussion and you will have a couple of assessors sitting in the corner of the room assessing how you interact and your behaviours. The final part of the interview day or half day will be to resit the online tests. So you will resit one or two of these tests to confirm accuracy of the marks. OK, if you're successful here, you move on to the next stage, which is the operational assessment. So new civilian staff will have to successfully pass their recruits course um, and on call and whole time transferees will have to pass a basic firefighter competency test. This is a basic firefighter test involving pumps and ladders, and it will last for approximately two hours. To give you some context, all on call and transferees passed the test last time and were appointed. However, some were issued with development plans. If successful here, you'll then move on to the 
final stage, which is the fitness test at medicals. These will take place at the end of July. You will be exempt from this stage. Um, however, other candidates will have to meet the same standards that you did, uh, i.e. 42 VO2 max on a treadmill for the fitness test. Results will simply be pass or fail. And that's it. This year there will be no swimming test. Conditional offers will be made hopefully the week commencing the 3rd of August with formal offers being made week commencing the 10th and the 17th of August. And as I say, we'll be looking to appoint firefighters uh, to start in October, either on a full recruits course or on a initial uh, week's conversion course. I hope you find that useful. As I say, apologies for not being able to get there in person. Please give me a ring on the number I gave earlier and also it's available on the service uh, website. Thank you for your time.